Hi everyone, thank you for joining. My name is Shinobi, I'm a virtual photographer, which means that I take photographs into uh, video games. And I'm also a photomod consultant, if it's even a thing, which means that I've worked with studios in the past to help them create their photo mode, advise them on the most needed features and how to use them. And I love to give my opinions about photo mode. So we are today in a photo mode overview of the brand new Banisher's Ghost of New Eden. So let's dive into it. Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden is the new game uh, from Don't Nod Studio and Focus Entertainment Publishers and I thank them both for providing me the game a week ago. The game released tomorrow. I've been playing this for a week or so. I love the game to the core. Um, it's everything I need from a Don't Nod game. RPG, strong choices to make, good graphics, uh, runs perfectly. I Really guys, I love it. Just go for it if you were excited about it for a long time ago. Now we're here to speak specifically of the photo mode. And it's very important for me to, to emphasize that I make a strict distinction between both photo mode and game. Because when I check a photo mode, I really want to just check if the features are useful, uh, well made, well implemented, and if they operate as they should. So let's see, let's see what can we do with this photo mode. To open the photo mode, you have a shortcut, which is always uh, appreciated. So on the control pad, if you use a control pad, I'm going to use the, the PlayStation control pad uh, as reference, but you can, of course, translate it to whatever you use. I'm playing the PC version on Steam. So you open the photo mode with this shortcut, which is the, the up on the D-pad. Very convenient, really easy to, to open at any moment. So it's, it's good for action shots. It's good for a lot of moments in the game. So really well done on, on this. You can also access it from the pause menu. Uh, it's here, open photo mode. So yeah, both ways. Uh, of course, the, the, the shortcut is, is the best way and it's very well made. So when you open the photo mode, you have the, this first panel on the left of your screen. And before we dive into the, the, the thing, you can see that pressing Y or, or triangle. I think there is a small bug here with the, the display of the buttons, but uh, it changes from one to the other. I'm, there is a day one patch that will fix uh, a lot of different little bugs. So maybe this one will disappear. It's no big deal anyways. So if you press, um, triangle or Y, you will have the menu mode. So we are now in the camera mode and then you have the menu mode. Some photo modes do this, they separate both uh, camera movement and um, features and stuff like this. I'm not a fan of this. I bet they have their reasons to have made this. Uh, the navigation is a bit weird for me. Um, I'm not sure about this, this choice, but anyways, you have those both modes. Okay. So let's go back to the, the first one you, you have when you open the photo mode, which is the camera mode. So you have move camera. Let's check the movement because obviously that's the most important. So first of all, I'm happy to report that this photo mode has a free cam. Now free cam to be very specific and clear to people who might just confuse it with a, a um, infinite uh, unlimited rounds camera. We are talking about the camera movement. So free cam is opposed as usually at uh, orbital cam. An orbital camera would go around your character always facing him or her or whatever, right? When a free cam is actually independent and you can move it freely behind or in front of the character and you can watch every direction uh, 3D, okay? You can go up, down, so it's on the crane, or the, sorry, the crane is on the, the trigger button, so mapping pretty normal here. And yeah, very appreciable to have, I mean, no, no, it's not appreciable, it's, we have to have a free cam in photo mode. We will never say this enough until no photo modes um, give us uh, an orbital cam anymore. 
uh, check out my last video on The Last of Us Part 2 remastered uh, photo mode because this is pretty a mess and it's very important to understand why they do this and why they shouldn't do this. All right, let's move on to this one. So rotate the camera, perfect. You can rotate it, it's nice. Take a photo with R3. Uh, so again, I'm playing on Steam and if I press my R3, I will have a, a Steam picture like this. Now, this is not the best compression quality you can have on your pictures. I would advise to use an outside program like Reshade or whatever, Nvidia, what you're using for your GPU to, to capture your screenshots, but whatever, you can do it with the R3. Now you have a precision mode and we will come back to this in a minute because it's a, a interesting feature, uh, but we have something to say about it. You have the height and display grid. Grid is always really interesting to have. Now, if you can, if you put a grid in your photo mode and you can put a, a central dot to mark the, the absolute center, it would be just slightly better. Um, so it's one ru rule of thirds grid. It's the basic one, it's nice. Uh, remember that nothing block you to just make a choice of few grids, few different composition grids. Uh, photographers really appreciate this usually. Then you have the tilt thing. We will talk about this again in a minute because you can tilt your camera here and I'm not sure why. Also when you tilt it here the, the incrementation um, you know the, the way it moves it's not really smooth it's like one degree per one degree I, I guess. We'll see that it's a bit weird but good news you can tilt all the way around. You don't have uh, a, a 45 degree limit or a 16 degree limit because it makes no sense except for cyberpunk i think they fixed this but it's still here in my throat um you don't have even a 90 degrees limit you don't have any limit so that's perfect that's really well done here now you have the hide and uh, display ui which is obviously very important for photo mode and then you have the menu mode that we talked about before. So let's go to the, the, the mode, the cam, sorry, what, what they call it? The menu mode, sorry. On the first tab, you will have the lens options, which is uh, field of view and focal distance with the aperture setting and the tilt. So you see, you can, you have already a tilt on the, the camera mode and then you have a tilt on the, uh, the menu mode. It's, it's a bit weird. Seems like they forgot to take one off. And this one, let's start with this actually. This one is much smoother and much more interesting to use, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure why the camera mode has one too. Anyways, field of view. So the field of view, you can open to 130 degree so once you open your phone very wide like this, you have a pretty strong uh, lens distortion that you can see in the in the corner, in the angles of the tree, for instance. And if you go closer to your uh, character, for instance, let me go there. Um, yeah, it's very distorted. It's not something we will use very often, but it's really nice to have a, a wide angle opening. It might come handy, you never know. And anyways, you can still limit to 110 if you want you, you don't have to go to 30 <laughs> but if you want you can so, so that's cool now the the close-up one the zoom in is to 50 degree for some reason and this is the first problem I, i'm gonna point out here it's that if you want to take a, a real close-up shot or a portrait that's the minimum distance you can go all right i mean not bad but i wish i could i could go closer to the character to make like eyes uh portrait you know like extreme close-up and then the precision mode that we've saw before on the first tab which is a cool uh feature to have and a nice touch to have it on the, the down d-pad it's a it's a shortcut as well so it's very easy to to lock and unlock it's nice, but then why would you put this and not give us the, the, the scenario where 
most of the time we will need this feature because at this this distance of the character i mean yeah sure it, it i can use it uh, but it's not super triggering to not have it right if you put it in then think about why people would use it and then give them the chance to actually use it meaning that you 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 could think oh they will need it for really super close detail shot so let's let the camera go as close as we need you know so that would be a big big help to just go a bit beyond in the thinking process not just copy paste a feature that you saw in another photo mode but think how people will actually use it for for your game and then you you can give them the extra mail anyways you have it not complaining about having a feature just explaining that if you put it in you might want to to think a bit more about how people will use it that's it so let's go back to this lens uh, tab so you have the field of view you have the focal distance uh, focal distance it works okay you have the aperture so you can open it very wide so it's less blur on your screen or you can make it to f uh, was it one it's one so you can have the most the most blurry and bokeh effect but then yeah uh let me oh okay i need the precision mode here <laughs> I would need it more if I was closer. So if you check the, the bokeh and the, the blur quality, it's not great actually. Um, there are some weird art artifacts and the shape of the blur is not super, super nice. But I mean, it, it works. It does the trick. You need to be a bit precise and it's, it's quite hard to tell where is your blur point at times. Okay, it's it's a usual problem for Dolph, but it's okay. It's it's not the worst Dolph I've seen. Uh, obviously, I wish I would I would have the control of close Dolph and far Dolph. That's something that some people don't like because it it's not natural. It doesn't work like a real a real camera. But for my part, I think that photo modes are not real camera, and we should use uh, the, the the opportunity to have different things uh, that are not possible in, in traditional photography but are possible in photo modes because we are in the virtual world and to me it's part of the creative process so we should embrace it but yeah i respect that some people think differently the rest of the photo mode it's actually filter you have a custom filter where you will play with gamma brightness uh, contrast and saturation those are very important uh, settings to have i'm very happy to put them all in there watch out if you play on hdr devices maybe some some of those features will be grayed out it happens sometimes because the hdr settings messes with this but if you can use them it's it's really nice after this you have the uh, the other filters and let's be frank they are pretty useless so you have the grayscale which is let, let me see is it exactly the same as yeah it's really just the saturation to zero yeah it's it's pretty much the same there, there is just a bit more of uh, brightness and contrast i guess but yeah you can definitely recreate it yourself then you have the sepia and uh, endless ritual they call this with fancy names from the game but it's just a red filter you have spectral which is a blue filter and saturated just put the saturation uh, up so you can do this by yourself desaturated same and the uh, cinematic which is one with more grain it doesn't show right now but it's just more grain <clears throat> so pretty useless filters i mean it's always cool to have something a bit faster to use some preset and stuff but seriously here it's really just contrast and saturation play so you can do this with much more efficiency uh in my opinion but okay whatever i'm not a big filter user anyway so but still i think they are a bit too simple then you have the layout it's an interesting one so the layout tab is about the watermark so it's actually just the logo 
I, I don't like that they call this watermark, but it's it's the logo. So you have this locked in uh, four, four places uh, on each angle, okay? You cannot move them, you cannot make them bigger, you cannot turn them. So again, pretty useless in most of the case. And then you have the, the Banishers, Ghost of Union and Title one. Same problem, it's just locked in four locations and you cannot turn them or make them bigger. So it's, again, it's useless. Just let us place it where we want. Then you have the Vignette. So they call this Vignette and it's not Vignette. Vignette is the effect of darkness around in the, in the corner and that goes in a round shape usually, <laughs> except for one photo that I worked on and I never realized that it was square shaped and I'm ashamed about this, but I won't. Anyways, so uh, it goes, you know, it makes the, the border blacks so, or you, you can change the colors in some photo modes, whatever. But this vignette is actually just what other photo modes would call frame. So you have this one that is pretty sick. Actually, I like I like the look of this one. Um, but yeah, it's just some frames. You have this one, this one that is really breaking my immersion with this game. And uh, this one with some blood effect. Yeah, again, not, not bad, very simple, very basic stuff. You have the hide the player character, which is super cool to have, especially because uh, in some occasions you will be along with the other character of the game, with your wife and maybe you want to take a shot of just one of the two characters so it's nice to to be able to hide this one it would have been nice to be able to hide also the enemies and uh, the other characters um, npcs or whatever you know, so you just put four different settings instead of two that, that's really no no big deal but yeah they didn't Okay, then you have this final uh, settings tab, which is the save camera settings and use save camera settings and reset all. So what does, does the camera save settings saves? It saves the field of view. It saves the focal distance as well and the tilt. So pretty much everything on the lens tab is saved with this. Everything that is on the display layout tabs won't be saved uh, by this uh, feature. Okay. Reset all will reset everything though. It will reset the display and the layout uh, settings as well. The camera range is not bad. Let's see how far we can go. That's about it. You can, you can go that far from your character. It's not really, really great. It's not perfect. We, we always need more anyways. But still, in a game like this with wide landscapes and super nice um, environments, you really want a bit more. It, it's really not sufficient here, in my opinion. So, yeah, a bit of a, of a bummer, but okay. It's not terrible as well. It's not God of War. It's not Horizon Zero Dawn. So, I mean, it's okay. You can still get something out of it. And also, another problem is that when you hide the, the menu, you cannot move the settings anymore. So you need to have these big boxes and it's it's kind of annoying to actually work on your shot. Uh, let me see something, save the camera settings. What if I close my photo mode? Because now I want to wait for the uh, an animation of my character. Let's, let's see if it works. This one is nice. Okay, so now if I go to, yeah, it does work, but again, not the, not the settings. So yeah, it's a bit of a hit and miss here. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video until this point. Uh, if you are not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. The channel is growing, uh, the quality will go up, hopefully, um, and we have a lot of new content coming up, I have IDs, and yeah, it's exciting time, so please support, drop a comment, leave a like, 
you know, do all this stuff so we can enjoy more virtual photography and uh, photo modes together. We have a new episode of uh, Explain That Shot that is coming every weekend for uh, three months. So check the playlist. We have a recent Everything Wrong With This Photo Mode episode dedicated to The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. So check it out if you will. And uh, yeah, find me on my socials. In the meantime, keep slapping.